Hello and welcome to another episode of Nathan Builds Robots. Today's video is sponsored by FlashForge and we're going to be taking a look at their new Adventure 5M Pro machine today. This is part of FlashForge's move to producing a higher speed Core XY machine that's running on Clipper with input shaping and all the other bells and whistles that we expect out of high speed Core XY enclosed printers nowadays. Just looking inside of here, this is all stuff that we've seen before. And if we look underneath the bed here, you can see some load cells. So it's using load cell based automatic bed leveling, just like what we've seen on the printers from Bamboo Lab and from the Creality K1. The actual bed here is pretty nice. It's got a little handle, which I haven't seen before, and it appears to be some kind of textured PEI sheet, and it's double-sided, so if one side gets worn out, you can just flip it over. The unboxing procedure for this was just the same as my Creality K1 and my Bamboo Lab P1P. Basically, there's just a couple of screws you have to loosen. You plug the thing in, put the spool holder on the back, and you're ready to go. Something that's a little different from other 3D printers that I've seen is this FlashForge Adventure 5M Pro has a quick remove nozzle. So you just pull these two little levers and you can detach the whole hot end assembly here. So here's our hot end. This is denoting this is a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. It looks like some kind of uh, glass or carbon fiber reinforced plastic here that this is encased in. And we've got a nice little copper heat sink there as well as an all metal heat break. And you can see these are the electrical connections that are used to power the hot end. So the thermistor and heater element are just automatically connected when you plug this thing in. So let's just reinstall this so you can see how simple this is. You just find the right spot, you push it up, and it clicks into place. And it makes a nice satisfying springy noise. It's almost like uh, reloading the magazine on a... But yeah, I mean, it's not quite one-handed because you have to use two hands to do it. But it's really easy to just pull this out and put a new one in if you have a nozzle clog or something. Let's take a look at some of the other features here. Here's our part cooling fan. On the left side, there's a chamber cooling fan. So this is just one of those large fans that blows air across the top of your print. Up at the top, you can see the belts and uh, metal rods that they're using to support the Core XY system. It looks like this is using all metal rods. And let's just see if there's any slop. I mean, it seems pretty well put together. And if we pull on the front here, we can pull off this fan. So up top, you can see the Bowden tube and wire that's powering the hot end. It's pretty neat cable management up there. There's your little hot end cooling fan. We've also got the extruder. It looks like this is held on with a couple of little pegs and a magnet. If you look at the back of the machine, you can see there's two little spots to install filters. It comes with some filters pre-installed, and that might help with the filament smell. In my personal opinion, these fans are never big enough to really filter out all of the smell, but that little bit of extra filtering should help. And then once again, you can see these wires at the bottom of the machine and some circuitry that's used to power the heated bed. Nothing too crazy there. We've seen this kind of stuff before. Overall, it's a very clean build, so, you know, not too much to complain about. Um, around the outside here, we have some foam, and that makes it so that when you close the door, it's held closed with a couple of magnets, and that foam should help keep any excess noise from escaping the machine. On the front, we've got a little power button, a USB plug, and the touch screen, as well as the branding up here. And overall, I think it looks quite nice. It's pretty well built and just looks good. Let's flip it on its edge here so we can kind of take a look at the top of the machine. We've got another plastic panel here. But if we flip that to the side, we can take a closer look at the cable management here. Everything looks super neat. If I wanted to access the control PCB for the tool head, I assume I could access it here. There's a PCB in there. You don't really have to worry about it too much though. The stepper motor placement is almost identical to what they have on the P1P. It's located right kind of in the center of mass in between these two rails, putting that heavy mass right in the middle there so that it's easier to manage. But other than that, there's not a whole lot to see up at this top angle. Everything up here looks very clean as well. Now around back is where you've probably got the most going on. There's a couple of access holes for you to adjust the tension on your Core XY belt system. Now this thing is Wi-Fi enabled, but they've also included an Ethernet port down here in case you want to plug it into a hardwired connection. That's just a little bit more reliable. The main board of the machine is back here, and I assume that's where the chamber fan vents out the back. So pretty nice and clean setup here. Overall, it's a very uncluttered design and I appreciate the aesthetic of this machine. 
Looking on the bottom here, I mean, it's just a pretty simple belt setup. This drives the three lead screws that move the bed up and down. We've got a tensioner and we've got our stepper motor over here that's gonna drive that belt. Something that's kind of funny about this stepper motor is they used a really big gear for it. I mean, it's like super tall, but that just helps account for any kind of misalignment that might be there. Then we've also got our little rubber feet all over the place here. I keep saying this, but it's just a really nice and clean design. So let's flip this back upright and get it powered on. Now it's important to note there's two power switches on this machine. There's a little switch in the back that turns the power supply on and off. And then there's this button up here that actually activates the printer. So this is kind of like a digital button and the one in the back is like a hardware button. But you just tap that button and that fires up the main board. This thing came with a little SD card so we'll plug it in and see if there's any precise models we can print. And the first thing that I'm noticing is there's quite a bit of fan noise coming from this thing. It's not coming from the print head, it's coming from the back of the machine. And we'll just take a little listen to it. I'm going to take the back off of this machine and we'll take a look at that fan just because I kind of want to see what's going on there. Also, I got a cool little electric screwdriver here. This is from Xiaomi, which actually make uh, smartphones, but they made a little electric screwdriver kit, so I'm going to use this on this 3D printer. And just so that we have some quantifiable data on this fan noise, I'm going to do my test where I have it an arm's length away, and we'll see what the sound levels are. So 47 decibels, that's a little bit loud in my opinion. So I'm going to see if I can fix that by taking those fans out. Okay, so here's our control board. It looks pretty big. That's a kind of a beefy board there. Okay, so what's making all the noise here? It's not the power supply fan. The power supply fan is quite quiet. Oh, jeez. This is the fan in question. It's right up here. And it's blowing air down across these heat sinks which I assume are the stepper drivers. I'm not a huge fan of that. We'll see if there's something I can do here. But if we had the Noctua fan right here, that would provide adequate cooling and it'd produce almost no noise. So we'll see if we can fit that into this design. Now Noctua reached out to the channel a little while ago. You know, I've bought hundreds of their fans because I use them on all sorts of 3D printer builds. I just like how they can make printers a little bit quieter. And they were like, hey, is there anything that you need? And uh, I was like, yeah, can you give me some fans? So they sent over some fans, and they also sent over this 24 volt to 12 volt adapter. So most 3D printers run on 24 volts. You can see right here, it says uh, 24 volts. But the Noctua fans typically run on 12 volts. So what do you do with that? Well, Noctua came out with this tiny little 24 volt to 12 volt adapter that I can just plug in right over here and that just changes this from a 12 volt fan to a 24 volt fan. But in any case, I'm gonna give this a shot and try it out on this new printer. The first thing I need to do is identify which wire feeds this fan. And it looks like it's this one over here. Let's unplug it and see. Yeah, that's much better. Okay, so we're just gonna to need to plug our Noctua fan into this little port down here. Noctua also provide this little OmniJoin cable connector kit. It's the NAJC2, and it has this little connector that will allow me to splice into that port there. So all I'm gonna do here is plug in this little extra JST cable I have laying around. I actually sell these on my website. Um, make sure not to short anything here. I'm noting that the positive and negative are reversed. I've got these tiny little Nipex wrench pliers that I use for this kind of stuff. Now I'm plugging the black into red on this particular installation, but definitely double check everything when you're doing this type of wiring. And it just really depends on the exact cables and fans that you're using. Then we've got our 24 to 12 volt adapter that we'll plug in right here. And then we'll plug in our 12 volt fan and see how that works. Works like a charm. Okay, now we need some way to suspend this here. So I think I'm actually gonna cut out a hole on this plate and uh, kind of get everything lined up here so that it works properly. So time to do a little bit of handiwork. Looks like I want the fan right about here. And then we'll trace out where we need that hole to be. 
I'll put it right about here. And then I'll mark where a couple of these drilled holes are gonna be. Mark a couple of those holes, and then I just need a circular cutout where the fan blades are gonna be. Now I don't have a plasma cutter table, which would make this a lot easier. I'm just gonna have to do this all by hand or with a Dremel. These are my nibblers. It's some of my favorite tools because they can just chew through metal like it's nothing. I just gotta get a hole started here, and then we'll nibble out this circle and get everything installed. And make sure you wear safety glasses whenever you're doing anything stupid like this. All right, the Dremel is actually very loud, so I'm gonna finish this off using my nibblers. Now these nibblers are really neat because they can just take little bites out of the metal here. Now that I've got this clamped in my bench vise, I can just take repeated snips out of it, and it's going a lot faster. Well, this demonstrates the importance of having proper work holding. Now this is a pretty low strength aluminum alloy. I mean, it doesn't have to be strong because it's not structural, but I think it's soft enough that I'll be able to just punch through it by hitting it with my 3D printed hatchet head. We need at least one more hole in here, so let's do the opposite side. All right, so we've punched two little holes in here for mounting the fan, and we've got our cutout to allow air to flow into there. Let's just uh, make sure there's no loose metal filings here. We'll get this all put back together. Now I'll just use some standard fan mounting hardware. All right, there we go, that's much better. This thing's nice and quiet now. So I'll be giving this feedback to FlashForge that they might wanna find a different way to mount these fans just to make it a little bit quieter. I mean, I don't wanna leave this thing running on my desk if it sounds like there's some kind of unbalanced load fan with this nice quiet knock to a fan. Everything's nice and silent, which is how I like it. Let's redo that decibel test to see how loud this thing is now. I think it was 47 decibels before. Just an arm's length away, we'll see how loud the printer is. Wow, 42 decibels just by switching over to this quieter fan. Now, I think every 3D printer manufacturer in the world should be concerned about how much noise their printer makes. And they should have decibel thresholds that they set as engineering targets for when the machine is idle, when it's printing, and when it's doing other miscellaneous features. Because, I mean, really that's a big part of the user experience. But if noise isn't that big of a concern for you, as I know it isn't for many people, um, you might not care about that. And now you know how to make this modification if you have one of these machines and want it to be a little bit quieter. Plus, you know, FlashForge, if you're watching, maybe you could uh, uh, integrate this change onto your latest version of the machine. So we'll just flip this back around. So on our homepage we have a basic readout of our nozzle temperature and our bed temperature. We can turn the lights on and off here. That's just the internal chamber light. We've got our printer information. There's our build volume. It's got roughly the same print volume as the Creality K1 and Ender 3. So we can go into our print files here. We've got a filament management tab. Overall, this is a really nice user interface. They really take advantage of this color touch screen. But let's just get some filament loaded here. So we've got our nice burnt titanium. I'll just follow the instructions on the screen here. And with this top panel open, we have easy access to the actual filament. And we can feed it in there and get the Bowden tube all primed and ready. Now, FlashForge is actually the same company as Voxelab. So I've reviewed the Voxelab Aquila in the past. That was a nice little entry-level budget 3D printer. It was basically an Ender 3 V2 clone. All right, so we've got that loaded up. I'll close the top lid, and that actually quiets this machine down quite a bit, having these lids closed. I guess that foam around the outside is doing a good job sealing everything in there. While we're at it, I'll do a couple more decibel tests. Arm's length away, we'll see what kind of noise we have. Wow, 41 decibels, and that's with the hot end fan on, and possibly the part cooling fan. No, the part cooling fan is stationary right now. That's just with the hot end fan. But with these doors closed, this machine is exceptionally quiet. Okay, so let's just print something out. Now I should note, before I started filming, I just got everything set up. And that basically just consisted of following the prompts on the touch screen, which basically told me to remove the screws and let it do its input shaping and bed leveling procedures on its own. And since this printer is using load cell based bed leveling, I don't have to program any Z offset for that bed leveling probe. It's using the physical contact of the nozzle touching the bed to determine 
the bed leveling mesh. So it should be a really simple machine to get up and running. I don't have to do any manual calibration. Okay, so now the printer is getting started here. It sounds like the part cooling fan just turned on and it's kind of loud, but if we close this up, again, it makes a significant reduction in the overall noise levels. We're looking at 47 decibels while it's printing. Now in terms of overall visibility on this machine, you do have a big bezel up here that blocks your view if you're looking at it from like a, a normal eye level onto a table height. But if you get down like this and look in there, you have a pretty good view of what's going on. Also, if you're looking down from the top, you actually have a very good view of everything on the print volume as well. Now we're going through the bed level mesh procedure. So it's just touching a bunch of different points on that PEI sheet to determine the curvature of the bed. All right, so our printers started up on the first layer. It's typical for printers to not have any part cooling fans turned on. So this is what it sounds like when you're just dealing with the mechanical noises of the printer. I'll hold the microphone up to the printer so you can get a good idea of what it sounds like. And if we open it up, As you can tell, it's quite a bit louder when everything's open, but I would just leave it closed. So overall, it's nice and quiet. We're looking at around 43 decibels. So a very quiet machine when all the part cooling fans are off and the door is closed. Now that we've started the next layer, the speeds have picked up and the part cooling fan has turned on and we'll get another sound reading here. Looks like it's between 50 and 53 decibels, depending on how fast the print head is moving. And it's quite fast. It's always fun to watch these high-speed Core XY printers go. Oh, there's a webcam on here. Let's turn that on. Yeah, there's a little camera on the right side here. Let's see, it says the chamber fan is at 100%. I don't know if I believe that. Oh yeah, it's spinning. That Actually, that uh, large chamber fan on the left side is pretty quiet, but it's actually blowing a nice little curtain of air across the top there and helping keep everything cool while it's printing. So since all the fans are on at 100% and it's printing at its maximum speed here, oscillating between about 200 and 300 millimeters per second depending on the print move, and we're uh, arm's length away, about one meter. We're looking at 48 decibels, maybe leaping up to 53-ish decibels when it does one of those rapid moves. I will say I'm a little bit disappointed in how loud that motherboard cooling fan is. So I'll definitely be giving some feedback to FlashForge to just install a quieter fan back there because just by replacing that one fan, I've made this quite a quiet machine and this is something that I really wouldn't mind having running in the corner of my office. Also, this machine has a really professional and clean aesthetic. So I really like the way it looks. it looks like the print is finished up in a little over half an hour. I remember I printed this exact same model on the Voxelab Ares and that took like two hours. On this printer it finished in a quarter of the time so this is a true speed printer and let's take a look at the quality. Here it is and it spins just fine so a very nice part. So uh, let's print out some other parts on here while we're checking this machine out. So in terms of print quality, I think things turned out relatively good. On this little spatula, you can see there's almost no ringing as it was going around those corners. It remained very precise and those quick directional changes were taken care of by the input shaping that's built into this machine. Just like all the other fast Core XY machines, it's got that accelerometer built into the tool head and it's able to calibrate itself and produce nice clean edges even at high speeds. 
On this little gingerbread man, you can see a little bit more stringing than I would like, but after changing the filament out to one that I know is pretty good, it's just Polymaker's normal light blue color, but um, this came out with a lot less stringing, so I don't know if it was the filament change or the different slicer profile that might have been used in the more recently sliced object, but regardless, the print turned out looking a lot nicer on this little blue guy here. And in terms of quality, I would kind of put all of the Fastcore XY printers on the same level in terms of print quality. They all print things really nice and they're all able to do it extremely fast. So there's no big surprises here. It's just a solid option for a printer. Now I'll remind you, this is a paid look at this machine. A lot of people don't like to call these reviews, but I'd like to reiterate that this machine got the same classic NBR treatment that any printer featured on this channel gets. I think it performed admirably well, and I think it'd be a good option and worth considering. Looking at printers at the same price point of $600, you're looking at the Bamboo Lab P1P, or the Creality K1, or the Chidi Tech X Plus 3. And of those four options, I kind of like this one the most. My Creality K1 hasn't been super reliable. I had to fuss with the extruder quite a bit to get it working reliably. In the Bamboo Lab ecosystem, you have the P1P, which is an unenclosed printer. If you want something comparable in terms of feature set, you're gonna have to step up to the P1S. And on that P1S, you have to deal with a pretty poor user interface. They don't have a nice uh, touch screen like on this machine. Overall, I think this matches the P1S in terms of its build and aesthetics. I mean, this machine looks really good and it's just well put together and it holds that noise in quite well. Oh, the other thing in terms of comparing this to the K1 is the K1 is quite loud. This machine is always nice and quiet. Now given I did replace the fan in the back of the machine, so I'm gonna be giving that feedback to the manufacturer, FlashForge, and kind of recommending that they really should be putting a larger, more quiet fan on this thing if they can. Compared to the Chidi Tech, it takes up a lot less space than the X Plus 3. However, the X Plus 3 has a built-in chamber heater, and it's also quite a bit bigger. It's 280 by 280 by 280. Ish. So, you know, that machine's much bigger than this one, and it's even a little bit bigger than the P1S. So yeah, it's a crowded market right now. But at the end of the day, any of these printers will get the job done. If you want to get one, check the description below to a link where you can buy one. Now, they also sell the Adventure 5M non-pro edition, and that's going to be basically the same thing, but with the side panels removed. There's gonna be some other differences in terms of the feature set, but the main thing with the Adventure 5M non-pro edition is it's coming in at an astonishingly low price. It's only about $400, and uh, sure, it's not gonna be enclosed, but it's gonna have roughly the same feature set and that fast change nozzle system and this nice touch screen. So that could be a really good option to look at as well. And I think that's gotta be one of the least expensive medium-sized Core XY high-speed printers on the market right now. So it's definitely worth considering. Just going over some of the other specs of this machine, it's got a maximum acceleration of 20,000 millimeters per second squared and a top speed of 600 millimeters per second, which puts it right in line with the Creality K1. And it's a little bit faster than the Bamboo Lab P1P, but you know, those differences are pretty minor. You can buy different nozzle diameters, which are easy to change out on this machine. So you can get 0.25 millimeters, 0.4 millimeters, which is the default. 0.6 millimeters and 0.8 millimeters. The maximum extruder temperature is 280 degrees Celsius. So that unlocks a range of materials including PLA, PETG, TPU, ABS, and ASA, and glass and carbon fiber reinforced materials. They advise using a larger nozzle diameter if you're printing with fiber reinforced materials, which just helps keep things flowing better. So for firmware, this thing is running Clipper. For slicing, what they actually recommend using is Orca Slicer, which is based on Bamboo Studio. So it gives you a lot of advanced features, including multiple trays that you can set up. Also, um, I was saying that the filters wouldn't really do much, but after printing with this for a couple hours, I don't really have any PLA smell in this room. So I think it's been doing a pretty good job of filtering out the smells. A funny thing about this machine is it's got internal circulation filtration. So it's just recirculating the air inside of it which basically prevents it from venting all that extra air out into the environment, which is why it's been so relatively unsmelly when it's printing. Now I can turn on the internal circulation fan using this setting here. So now it's just filtering the air and capturing all those PLA microparticles. But I can also turn on the external circulation system and listen to it. 
Did you hear that? It sounds like it's got a little servo in the back that opens up a valve and then lets it vent to the outside air. So there's a lot of neat little features on this machine. All right, so I'd like to say thank you to FlashForge for sponsoring this video, and I'm glad we could take a look at this Adventure 5M Pro. Make sure to check the links in the video description if you want to see where you can buy this thing or check out the rest of its feature set that I might not have talked about in this video. Also, if you have any questions about this printer and want to learn more about it, let me know in the comments section below. And uh, I don't know, what do you think about this thing? Do you think there's room in the market for yet another high-speed Core XY printer? I think this thing will have its niche in being a relatively affordable printer that's based on open source software and isn't forcing you into weird cloud shenanigans. I think there's some options to turn on some cloud functionality on this machine. The one thing that I can't figure out, and this is just because this is a very early access machine and they don't quite have the documentation there, is how to get connected to Wi-Fi so I can send prints from my computer to this machine. However, I should be able to transfer the files over USB drive, so I'm just going to do that for now. I'd really like to do a follow-up where I figure out how to do the Wi-Fi functionality on this machine, but for now I'm just going to use the USB drive and frankly that's how I do most of my prints anyways. I think these files are actually stored on the machine's internal memory, so if I unplug this flash drive we still got access to some files here, which is pretty cool. Alright, well, as always, thank you for watching this episode of Nathan Builds Robots, and I'll see you in the next one.